You can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. And you can't become the number one drama on television without generating at least a little bit of off-screen drama. That's certainly the case with NCIS. The hit procedural might be popular now, but it wasn't an easy path. What went on behind the scenes to make this one of the highest rated shows on television? That's a question worthy of its own investigation. Title Troubles Few people remember it now, but when NCIS first spun off from parent show JAG in 2003, it was far from a guaranteed success. In fact, CBS was worried that the show would be overshadowed by the network's runaway smash, CSI. So, CBS called the show Navy NCIS for the first season in order to minimize confusion over the similar acronyms. Showrunner and creator Donald Belisario eventually convinced the network to drop the Navy part because it's totally redundant. The N in NCIS already stands for Naval. It's a lot to keep track of. Agents, don't move! LAPD! NSA! NCIS! MOUSE! Mark Harmon's Rage Belisario abruptly left NCIS in 2007 for a very unexpected reason. Star Mark Harmon forced him out. Reportedly, the two tangled behind the scenes for months over Harmon's dissatisfaction with Belisario's chaotic management style. It led to a showdown, and the network decided they could live without Belisario, who was forced to resign. The show continued with a presumably happy Harmon sitting pretty. Belisario still got the last word, however. NCIS Lawsuit Angeles Given the huge success of NCIS, it seems like a no-brainer that it would eventually spawn a spin-off. But the creation of NCIS Los Angeles in 2009 actually led to a major lawsuit. That's because NCIS creator Donald Belisario had a clause in his contract giving him the right to create the first spin-off. After he was forced off the show, CBS hired Shane Brennan to create the offshoot show instead. After years of legal wrestling, they settled out of court for an undisclosed amount. At an estimated net worth of $250 million, Belisario certainly isn't suffering either way. NCIS Red In 2013, NCIS was poised to add yet another series to its franchise in the form of NCIS Red. Introduced in a two-episode arc on NCIS Los Angeles, NCIS Red was going to star John Corbett as the leader of Red Team, an anti-terrorist unit within NCIS. One NCIS team isn't enough. The network decided they didn't really dig what they saw in the backdoor pilot and the series was canceled before it ever began. Instead, the network launched NCIS New Orleans. Don Johnson. Almost. Mark Harmon has been the face of NCIS for well over a decade now, but viewers could have actually seen a very different face in the role of Agent Leroy Gibbs. That's because the role was actually offered to Don Johnson first, and he turned it down. He wasn't the only candidate, though. Rumor has it that NCIS New Orleans star Scott Bakula was also on the original shortlist for Agent Gibbs way back in the day, since Belisario and Bakula had previously worked together on Quantum Leap. By the time NCIS New Orleans came along, the showrunners knew the right man for the job was Bakula, because he's spectacular. <laughs> Polly Perrette's Twitter Blunder In 2013, actress Cody DePablo, who played fan-favorite NCIS agent Ziva David, abruptly announced her departure from the show. It was a surprise, not only to fans, but to her co-stars. Around the same time, Perrette posted a tweet of herself wearing a shirt she received in 2007, which said, I love my job. It seemed innocent enough, but it set off a minor Twitter war with DePablo's fans, who saw it as an attack. Allegedly, DePablo called Perrette to ask that she stop tweeting about the situation. Perrette shut down her feed for less than a day. She should have just worn the shirt instead. Perrette's personal life. While Perrette has clearly been the subject of real-world drama, she's done her best to turn lemons into lemonade by using her position as a platform for advocacy. In 2006, she revealed that her former husband Francis Coyote Shivers had subjected her to years of physical and emotional abuse. And just in 2015, after she was randomly attacked by a mentally ill homeless man, she began championing the rights of the homeless. Just to be really super grateful to be alive, but the other part is that, like, my heart breaks for that guy, and, and it breaks for every single person that's out there on the street. She's also stood up for marriage equality and even recorded music with a positive message for victims of abuse. Diane Neal's Twitter Meltdown In 2015, guest star Diane Neal launched an angry Twitter attack on NCIS New Orleans. Upset over safety issues she encountered on set while filming, Neal called the show's production dangerous and stupid, saying stuff like, they just use me like a rented mule, and these folks don't give a damn, didn't go over well behind the scenes. Neal apologized and deleted the tweets. Some sharp-eyed folks on Reddit captured the drama and preserved it for posterity, however. Moral of the story, never tweet angry. A very important cameo. With three different shows and more than 20 combined seasons, the NCIS franchise has had a lot of high-profile guest stars. 
but none of them can quite match the star power of First Lady Michelle Obama, who appeared as herself on the series in early 2016. Her appearance was made in support of Joining Forces, a nationwide initiative supporting service members, veterans, and their families. Kinda makes that time Taylor Swift showed up on CSI seem pretty lame by comparison. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw, and leave us a comment to let us know what you've heard about NCIS.